Hello everyone uh, and welcome to week three. This week we are looking at linear equations. So for our discussion this week we are focusing on parallel and perpendicular lines. So let's look at a few key points. First key point is that parallel lines have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So an example of a pair of equation that, equations that are parallel would be y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x plus 8. My slope for each one of those lines is 2 here because of the y equals mx plus b form. And therefore, since those equations have the same slopes, then the lines are parallel. Now, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite signs and reciprocals, or opposite signs and flipped. Um, the product of perpendicular lines, product of the slopes of perpendicular lines is negative 1. So an example of a couple of equations that are will create perpendicular lines will be y equals 1 third x plus 8 and y equals change the sign so negative flip that 3 over 1 or just 3 x plus 10. The key would be the slopes. Uh, the slope of that first line is 1 third. The slope of the second line is negative 3. Opposite signs and flipped. So perpendicular lines they form 90 degree angles or right angles and parallel lines they never touch. Okay so we're going to look at writing the equations of lines when we're given uh, a point on the line and given well, we're going to identify the slope from a given line. So what we need to be able to write the equation of a line is a point and the slope. And as you can see here, I have it labeled x1, y1, and m. And I have it labeled that way, the x1 and y1, because we're going to use the point-slope form to help us to write the equation, equations of lines. So the point-slope equation is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we will set up the equ that equation and as long as we or, or have a given point and the slope then we can replace the x1, the y1, and the m in that formula and we could solve that equation for y to get it into slope intercept form. So now would be a good time to pause if you want to write down that information. Okay. All right. So the first problem we're going to do is to find a line that's parallel to uh, this given line, y equals negative two thirds x plus two, and passes through the point negative six, negative three. Well, the good thing about the equation that we were given is that it's in slope-intercept form. Therefore, I can I easily identify my slope. My slope for my given line. It's negative two-thirds. When we have y by itself, the slope is the number that's in front of x. So now that I know what m is, m is negative two-thirds, and I know what my given point is, then I can take that information and plug it into my point-slope equation and then solve that equation for y. And then I would have a line that's parallel to my given line. So let's take my point slope equation and let's replace the three parts, the y1 with the y coordinate from the point, so negative 3, y minus negative 3. m is the slope, negative 2 thirds, times x minus negative 6. Okay, now we don't want to leave the minus negatives in there like that, so let's go ahead and clean that up. Minus a negative makes plus. So we have y plus 3 equals negative 2 thirds times x plus 6. Now you can either work with the fraction and go ahead and use your distributive property there, or you can clear your fractions. The way we clear fractions is to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. So the only denominator we have here is a denominator of 3. So I'm going to clear my fractions out by multiplying both sides 
by 3. So on the left hand side I have 3 times y plus 3. On the right hand side I have 3 times negative 2 thirds times x plus 6. So since I have this 3 directly next to this parentheses with the sum here, now I have to use my distributive property. And that will give us 3y plus 9. Here I have 3 times negative 2 thirds times x plus 6, so I'm just going to multiply the 3 times the negative 2 thirds. And uh, remember, this is the same thing as 3 over 1. So I can simplify those 3's. 3 will go into 3 one time, or you could say 3 times 2 is 6 divided by 3 is going to give you that negative 2. All right, now let's use our distributive property here. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 6 is negative or just minus 12. And now we want to work on solving the equation for y. So that means I want to move the 9 and the 3 away from the y on that left hand side. So let's move the 9 first using our addition principle. We would subtract 9 from each side. And then we don't want 3 times y, so let's divide everything by 3. So it gives us 1y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 7. And as you can see, this slope is the same as the slope for our original given problem. So that tells me that this line is parallel to our given line because they both have a slope of negative 2 thirds. So again, the key is having the point, any point on the line, and the slope. Plugging those points in, plugging that information in for your x1, y1, and m in the point-slope form. And then solve the equation for y. Now this one we had to go through a little bit of extra work because we have that fraction in there. Okay, so now again, it will be a good time to pause the video if you want to need some time to write all of that down. Okay, let's look at this problem here. We're going to find the line that's perpendicular to the given line. So we're given the line or the equation y equals negative 4x minus 1. And all we need to know out of that equation is the slope. And since it's in y equals mx plus b form, we know that the slope for our given line is negative 4. And we want to, want to write an equation, equation of a line that's perpendicular to that one that passes through the point 0, 5. So since my given line had a slope of negative 4, then the slope of my line that's going to be perpendicular, perpendicular to that one has to have opposite signs, so it's going to be positive, and it has to be flipped. So 4 over 1, or 1 fourth. So now, I'm going to take this information. The slope of my line perpendicular to that one has a slope of 1 fourth. And we want it to pass through the point 0, 5. That's our x1 and y1. Let's plug it in. y minus 5 equals 1 fourth times x minus zero. Now here I don't, it's probably really not necessary that you clear the fraction since we have that minus zero there. Uh, you can if you choose to, but as for this one since we have x minus zero then we have y minus five equals one-fourth x because anything times zero is zero. And then we could just add five to both sides. So with that given information, a line that's perpendicular to that one that passes through the point 0, 5 would be y equals 1 fourth x plus 5. Now just for good practice, I am going to clear that fraction just to go through how we clear fractions again. So if I wanted to do that same problem but I wanted to clear the fraction, then my, the only denominator that I have is 4. 
If we had more than one fraction, then we would find the common denominator and multiply both sides by the common denominator. So here I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So that gives us 4y using our distributive property minus 20. Again, this is the same thing as 4 over 1. Now these are reciprocals, and any number times is reciprocal is simply 1. So it gives us 1 times x minus 0 or 4y minus 20, 1 times x is 1x. Now we want to solve for y, and this is why I said with this one, it takes a little bit longer to clear the fraction, but it's good practice. And then we don't want 4 times y, so let's divide everything by 4. And as you see, we come out with the same exact answer just two different methods to work that problem. Okay, I hope you found this video to be helpful. Thanks.